is O Lord, great is thy faithfulness. They are new, they are new every morning. Oh, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, Lord, great is thy faithfulness. This evening, let's open our mouth and thank the Lord for how wonderful he has given us this day. Bless the name of the Lord for giving us this wonderful evening. As we have gathered here to have this relationship talk, let's ask the Lord and thank the Lord for giving us a day like this. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Father, we magnify your holy name this evening. Father, we worship you, O God. We thank you for how you have been unto us. We thank you for the mercy of the Lord. Father, we magnify your holy name this evening, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Oh, I said, yes, I said, I said, I said, I the day into God's hands that let's ask the Lord for him to take control over this meeting that whatever we have any questions that would be on our hearts let it be answered in the name of the Lord Jesus mighty name of Jesus. Father, we commit this evening's program into your hands, O God. Father, whatever discussions that will come here, O God, Father, may it be fruitful. Mm. Father, anything, O Lord, anything that will be discussed, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, may we get answers to our problems, O God. May we get good way in our, this program, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We magnify your holy name this evening. Father, we Commit the program into the yes, name of God. Let us be a success, O oh God, in the name of the Lord yes, Jesus. We give you glory, yes, we give you honor, we give you praise. In the yes, name of the Lord yes, Jesus. And so, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you for how wonderful you have given us the grace and the blessings you have stored upon us. Father, we thank you for the strength that you have given us to be here. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we commit this program into your hands. 
Father, may you have your way over here in the name of the Lord Jesus. And at the end of the day, glory and honor shall be upon your holy name. This and many things we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please shall we be seated. We thank you all for coming. Um, today is a special day. We are co emceeing this program this evening. I would want us to start this program, continue this program actually, by calling on RPV to give us some ministration. Shall we clap for them? Hallelujah. We all do respect one being our feet. This month is a month of love. We want to show our gratitude to God for He Himself loving us first. Bible says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And the condition is that for whosoever believes in this man shall be saved. Amen. Amen. I want you to close your eyes. Even as this month is being declared as a month of love, just picture back. How have you loved your neighbor? How have you shown love towards those that, who live around us? Even your children, how do you show them love? Wonderful, you are worthy, oh, oh Lord. You are wonderful, you, you are worthy, oh, you are wonderful, you.
another day blessed by the Lord and we are privileged to be here and I'm mostly privileged to be the person to introduce our resource person we have a very tall introduction and I, I'm, I'm not going to cut much from it because it's an honor and I'm doing this because I hope that by the time I finish all the young people will be here I don't want them to miss anything if I finish quickly he will start and we'll miss much so I'll go to <laughs> I'll do this introduction and pray that by the time I end, the place will be filled with the young people. We are blessed. And I think it's only here that when they pay for things for us to come, we don't come much. But today, it will be different. By the time I finish, the, the young ones will start filling the place up. Okay. So today, we are privileged to have a man who is a Christian and passionate about youth service at the same time, passionate about building healthy homes. And it's a good balance for us as young people and even as adults, merged together, wanting to create something that will teach us about creating healthy homes and also how to manage relationships. Okay, so he will take us through today's lifelong journey. And he's in the person of Elder Amos Kevin Annan. He's He's a licensed youth minister and a certified life coach. And as I said, he's passionate about creating healthy homes. He's an advocate of that. And because of his passion and the things that he does, he's created many programs and organizations that help him to be able to put these programs out to others. So he's a CEO of Hearts and Habits Foundation. And then he's a regular panelist on CTFM. Those of us who listen to CTFM a lot, I'm sure we know Elder Amos Kevin Annan. So he's a regular panelist there. And then um, he, he's mostly there on Saturday mornings, yes. And then also he's the immediate past deputy youth director of the Church of Pentecost. He's, he's held that record for 16 years under three directors. They come and go, but he's still there. Titi Butai. So from 2004 to 2020. 
I see them trickling in. Uh -huh. I said it, the place will be full. No, let me finish. I want all my young people to come before. A small, oh, Reverend, and I'll come for you. I'll come for you. This one is called pressure. You see, they are coming. Okay. So, and he's married. He's married. He has been the student counselor of Pentecost University from 2006. He's a conveyor of singles in 3D summits, creative couples, conclaves, females in fellowship, and mobilizing males. He's an author, and he's authored many life-changing books. Please, with a standing ovation, let's give it up for Elder Amos Kevin Annan. Thank you very much. Um, please be seated. Methodist is my mother's church, so I don't like much said about me. <laughs> In honor of my late mother, who was a member of the Christ Little Band um, and was in the Atos cell in Tema St. Paul Methodist Church. I thank you so much for the honor of inviting me to be here. It's an honor session and the youth as well as the committee when Reverend Right Reverend Efriye was here, um, because my second daughter is Efriye, we had a very good relationship until the retirement. Uh, we missed that, but yenimse rade nyako po efe no so ema ni oko na home gym no so. Bibia e pepe pe. Meda Yenra Emmanuel and so I say, he's been always the contact person um, from day one that I came here. Now, you know, say, and come on, you be dinner, you marry, you uncle Panga Sabahe, so no boy, me and your monty as here. Now, I'm a monk who could draw me a yasam near for. Amen. But your mom pie. Yene Rade, Yena Jen Kwa, and then you marry your name. We're before you, God, because you're sovereign. We are your people, and you are our God. We yield all our members and our faculties to you, and we're asking, O oh Lord, that you grant us grace immeasurable. As I share your word with your people, Lord, may the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord. Thank you for hearing us in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Odo akwentu enohon komo eniyedi. Chirose ma yeti asyese irade nyanko po ena enyune onipa. Nansena mene minnan fubi awaya asori mpe ni fodi yanko mo na. Ba ako kasa na oka se. The matter is like a chicken and egg situation. Oka epe na mbusa se chicken and egg situation sen. Theory be na u kan hua se mi. Eye creation theory ana se bibi fofro. Eza se u konya mi ase mu dia. Ye bo ako kono no be tu kosia. Inti there is no dispute. Ye ni nkomo fofro biya kan hua. U di bibi fofro be she mpe. Na wako fa a different theory. Propounded by a mortal being. Not the creator of the heavens and the earth. Amen. So the Bible tells us in Genesis 2 and verse 18, a very famous, Genesis chapter 2, we can't have it. That's on the screen. The Lord God said, let us not go up into the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make, we don't say, I will make a helper suitable for him. My version no King James no say, I will make him an help meet for him. 
Eno na what they call yen krum kasanoa ye titura kan kasanoa or se me bonni se subwafu. Se subwafu. The I am sharing that today the most painful thing that I observe over the period as I deal with marriages is that nipe free se subwafu no so abe yes se so obrufu. And for the young men and young women who are here, who are not yet married, you must set your heart to respond to God's original intent of a suitable help meet. Ye kaso bi ye sesoa. Neche se ya bono nyamisu ne ne seso. The essence of the person is the image bearing element. O ye nyame seso. Enti wuni nyame seso na ekot na ware ya se. Ebi sha se ye won yonko fem. Ebi nsu mfan yonko. Enra na mini students wo UPS e din komona bako se. They say that you must date before you marry. And I'm saying, who say that? Which rule book gave you that? Now, me chen o madam fubi a oshia ne yere we iya se, and they be married 25 years on, no dating but 25 years on. Me share be monso a campus relationship. Yesi ye dating ye shasi level 100 da kosi 400. Ko ye national service. If you're a national service, first job, and you're a warrior, they could not survive four months of marriage. What is happening? Seso buafo. Bisa anwa se, so wu ye seso buafo. O kwa wari ye mono, o honka fuwa wane ni kotine mono, o honu so ye o seso. Na so ye o seso, na waba wari ni mwa. Kwa anbe so, ena u hiyan e mwa, a obe buafo. Ibiti ya wariye mwa wun susu se wun hiya mwa. Because suya adia kakra wun yuvu the mission. And yuvu the mission, yenya faculty member bi, ofi island. Almost mi yenka Ireland. Yede gana adia yekana Ireland. But almost mi yenka island. Na, papayi, those days, no, sa projecta na yede transparency toso no. Transparent film no, yede toso no. Na wa, wape jane ni muno na, wade ato bain. And yet, now bear for dear, and then I'm weary. And say, cry, be a baki to Abby. Oh, up your ground, who say a projector, and so near Juma. Papa Iba, no, those days, and so laptops, and so no more do. I can say, no, Bruni, Okra projector, you have no cry laptop, you are, and then the books no bonobo. And the laptop, they are not their children, the bosa, and no cry bag, no cry projector, and so on. The Ogos Oko Bona, I say, I can handle it. I can handle it. Offer my own da. Only why offer my own. Oh, here I'm going for. It is my prayer that each one of us here, contemplating marriage, already married, must see yourself as a help suitable to the person in whose life you find yourself. And nunti yemfa ya wari en tutu obidi yon. And na yemfa ya hukafu en kutu obidi yon. I can't cast an or or your home come for. The man is sending a beard and a home come if we. It is a on to me and yes, a so boafoa, no boa bro. When to me and your home come for, no other than a home come if for. And no, 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 a dear trench you are a rebel brim. No, 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 so bad yen. Now what you are, yeah, bomb pie, sir, or drana monti, and yes, ah, na my four daughter, na, a moon no no. And the pain I or you TV near can was them in the morning. And pain be brain, no, our rear no, I can was them, no, I call ye a nisu a nisu a dear. And I call ye meeting cow or me, hey, meeting cow or me, hey, meeting, I think I'm going, and he nipa no susu say. And nay, I think I'm a pigeon musa, no, ye nyako kotra, warrior, say, I think I'm a better now, da. No doom ya for no, abba, every year in swag so. Is I say, a janet then who? A janet who? 
So if you're here as a single person not married, you must understand that instead of developing relationships, build friendships. You've not been breed, you're building relationships, but they are not building friendships. Friendships are deeper than relationships. Now who call campuses are? They don't take time. I am married to my best friend. On our wedding day, the banner behind on the platform was today I marry my lover and my friend. That was the banner. I hang here during our wedding. Why? Because a friend loves at all times. A friend, the wounds from a friend can also be trusted. Maybe I met no yeah were in some baby na to be an eh yeah oh papa penny mo mammy penny more ma worry thirty years, forty five years, fifty years. If papa name mammy they they lived they married for over fifty years. Me papa free mo within three weeks na me mammy so free. So we laid the two of them together. Romani, the method is near our worry. Now we're back up Pentecost. But if you so share, but if you go more to go, I hear you be seeing. But in Yamia Dom, then I join the power the two years on to you to miss you one in our tema. We do tema come to nine cemetery by Presbyterian Church now. It's the biggest graveyard you will enter on the right. Me papa ni me mama dao. Within three weeks of my father's death, my papa shall free him. My mother also decided to follow. Into a woo crying to me and to one tell. Even in death, that was the attribute I read for them. Even in death, they were together. And then nipati wants to the omo matiti because slam penny for be brain and me shape any more to her. Only you couldn't know that any atom for. Wa bobra, wa ye juma, wa tine nimfi free, wa kunu huwa maumai, wa kunu huwa maibusia, toiled. But when you know, wanene huka fuo, wante mongo. Why should it be so? Sabre ya waba hum jie mwa, zosa, wa jina homi, this is the time they must enjoy life. This is the time they are also not on good terms. Adent. Because many, 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 many parents made a fatal error. Yet they are holding in a shame. And I mean, oh, this is my children, my children. What did my children, my children, my children, everything, my children, everything, my children, my children. It is one holding what that year will be beyond the children, the children, the children. And then the two of you are there and you are not building into each other. Error, who and so for you, those young men and young women who are here and you're not yet married, the marriage journey is sustained by friendship. We call Mount Olivet, one of the Easter seasons, to discuss with them friendship. You see, friendship is so important that if you are not a friend in your marriage, when you grow, it will bite you. Because feelings, no name, yet he can't come in a no, a best a superhang. A superhang. Or see, or me tea, or don't know, or me mupa, a superhang. Now say, be be a superhang. Now I'm more than so so a tia. Niet na hono, a young coin, a dawa new yere, new kununte. So, young men and young women, do not skip the vital building block of friendship. Before you start a relationship, too many of you are only building relationships, and you need to pay attention now to friendship. Many years ago on TV in Ghana, there was a program called It Takes Two. And It Takes Two, a program here, you're testing Crawford and Kofa. And you'll be there, and they will tell you to tell your friends favorite color, favorite food, favorite this, favorite that. Now, Obi Beji now will say, how long have you been friends? Oh, from our childhood. From our childhood. That's fantastic. So that presupposes that you know the person well and well. Now, 
ye ma ba kunu kujira na ba ko aba ese ni favorite food ye den o se yoko gari na na dan fo na ba ebisa na o se media ni ye wache of course ning na beans wo each of them have got beans <laughs> each of them have got beans and so it's important that yes there's beans but yoko gari and wache are not the same they are not the same it's important that the spouses or persons who are prospecting to become spouses understood that you need to get to know whoever you are dealing with. Now, if you're going to know someone, you must understand a basic principle in relationship formation. Relationship 101. People will show you what they want you to see. The rest, be ready to discover in marriage. I see a lot of young men and women making the fatal error. Oh, when I walk with her two years, I'll know her. When I walk with him three years, I'll know him. It's a big joke of the century. Because when it comes to relationship building, people show you what the things they want you to see. But when you marry them, you discover a lot more. It is the discovery that leads to the water shock. And there are so many of us who are not just ready for water shock. You can ask those who are married here. They have had their own water shock experience. I've sat with people who never knew that their husbands to be has foot rot. Now they get married, the guy takes his shoe out, and the whole place is as if it's a fishing industry. It's like a harbor. <laughs> Because it's stenchy, fishy smell. But they had no idea. I shared a story of a young lady who lost her hair when she was in Fijai Secondary School. This young man got married to her when he had met her in the university. And the hair she had on was not her original hair. But this young man had always thought that this young girl had long hair. Because that's what he saw. And he was in love with the length of hair. Madly crazy about hair length. Well, please be careful. Buyer, beware. He had no clue that this young girl in senior high school lost her hair. On their honeymoon, they had decided to take shower together. The lady goes to the bathroom to change. The young man is there. He tips off and falls asleep, slightly asleep, because he was tired. The ladies have a lot to take care of before, you know, the wedding day. And then he heard somebody mention his name in the dark. Out of sleep. He went like, Ayahuaya. He says, Ayahuaya. Who are you? It is me. You who? His wife. You know what? The lady says, now that we are married, I want to show my true self to him. So she has taken off the wig and now clean shave, bald-headed wife, standing in the dark with a glittering skull, shining like the sun. The guy could just not believe it. Do you know what he said? What else are you hiding from me? That's the reality of life. And so get it from me this evening. There are things you know about a person, but there are things you will discover about the person once you make a commitment to them. Let's move to the, the second part. In Genesis 2, verse 22 and 23, in the New King James Version, it reads, Then the rib which the Lord had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. So for as long as we live, forget about all the 
disputes and the cultural wars happening about whether male and female, whether we are binary or non-binary or whatever, that's not a conversation. We can have that conversation heated. But you see, it's important that we all come to appreciate that the woman is not a stranger. The man is also not a stranger. They are actually from the same root called Adam. And Adam, as he was walking, he was actually two in one, if you like. So God had to cause a deep sleep to fall on Adam in order to extricate the woman out of him and then form. Now, Nyankopo anyone or bano de neama bere man or bisano so be friend is saying I'll say your friend is say is and say ye yini free me mu. Now it's important say ye kwa wari moa. We must know that we belong to each other. It is so important. I see a lot of married people who are married, but they are thinking like singles. They are married, but they are talking as though they are single. They are married, but they are behaving as if they are single. You go to the office, you can't tell whether he's a single lady or a single man, or he's a married man or he's a married lady. Yet the idea of confusion, basa. Why should it be so that a man can actually hold the neck of his wife and shake her until life departs from her? When that woman is supposed to be one flesh with you, part of you. It is my prayer that as you journey on marriage, not only are you forming friendships, not only are you getting to a place of positioning yourself to be a help to whoever you're going to marry, you are not just going to be somebody who's just there to you know, fill a vacuum or a void. But you are one flesh with that individual once you marry. So in Jesus' words, in Matthew 19 and verse 6, he says, they are no longer two, but one. They are one. Today you see a lot of people going to marriage and they take 50% in and they expect their lover or spouse to bring 50%. That is divorce. It is divorce that calls for 50-50. But marriage calls for 100-100. If you're not ready to give 100% of yourself to your lover or your spouse, stop it. This whole idea of giving 20% and leaving 80% for just in case is something we must challenge. Because the people who have one leg in the marriage and the other leg standing outside for just in case. And so the least provocation, I'm out. Out to where? And some of us from day one, we have not been in. We have just been operating on fair weather friendship, pretending to be there when we are not. But may the God we serve give us grace. Oh, hallelujah. Are we together, church? Now, the journey would require you first and foremost, if you're going to get married, to move from your dad and your mom. And the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24, it says, therefore, when you see this statement actually coming before he says therefore a man why it's a reason for this reason in some of the translations so therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh one flesh so they are back to one flesh again it's amazing to see how when we marry and we start having children it gets to a point that children will leave us. And just as it was in the beginning, so shall it be life without end. We will go back to square one as we began. And we, for instance, my wife and I, have started rehearsing our empty nest. And we are enjoying it because our two daughters are away from us. And now we are just like when we started without them. And that is life. But I find a lot of people, it's becoming a burden some endeavor when it's just left with the two of them they are not talking they can't play they can't do anything they are just there hello and they say and they're where did he where did they and then they just go it's just functional transactional communication 
Why? You can't play cards. You to me to damn your worry. I mean, and so many homes today, you need Ludu Kra or Hobio. But we grew up in homes where we had Ludu. I used to play cards with my father. My father would sit with us on Saturdays, we play cards. And people say, Oh man, I'm going to church. But none of us play chacha. Even today, that is on the phone. I don't do it. Today, you go to church, young men and women, they are fidgeting with their phone, tracking their betting in the church. That is the state of the church. Tracking betting. And he will come and tell you, We are a generation who do not move by sight, we move by faith. And you are doing betting. God have mercy on us. Now it's sad that even the women, the girls have joined. Because their theory is that what men can do, women can do and even better. And so the journey now is this, that you must set your mind that you leave father and mother. You see, unfortunately what I'm hearing today is that a lot of young men and women, there's a difference between leave and abandon. Let not anybody who is seeking to marry you make you abandon your father and mother. You are not supposed to abandon them. The mother and the father who have toiled to take care of you suddenly becomes enemies. I'm sitting with a lot of people who are struggling with their in-laws because they see their in-laws as a burden. But there is a blessing that comes with in-laws. And we must cultivate in-law relationships way before we take a decision to marry. And this is where friendship is crucial. If you build friendships, their parents will know you are friends. Yeah. And over time, parents who notice that you are friends, you've been friends for a while, would call you and ask you, are you having some plans for the future? That is what responsible parents do. But many of us were going online and talking to people on Facebook, chatting with people on WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and doing all those things. And say, we are in love. And every day, 24-7, you are on the phone. It's a crazy world we find ourselves today. I was talking to a young lady who found this fellow who she thought was a man online. Only for her to discover later that this person, four years ago, was not a man, was actually a woman. That's the threat you're facing online. With all these online dating stuff going on. Some of you are going to have a shock of your life to discover that the individual who is your, in your life now used to be a woman who now has become a man. And has retained the capacity and the potential to be able to conceive. And so she says she's a man, but she can become pregnant. She says she's a woman and can still have sex with a woman like a man does because he retained his genitalia. The world is becoming very confusing. And I plead with each one of you to be careful with your steps. Let God order your steps. Oh, amen, oh. You see, you leave father and mother and be joined to your spouse. Don't abandon your father and mother. When my parents were alive, my wife was closer to them than me their son. I deliberately decided to do that. I'd rather build good relationship with my wife's parents. And when we have to give gifts to our parents, I give to my in-laws and my wife will give to my parents. Because we want to build trust in each other's eyes. Some of us don't even want our spouses to see we are giving gifts to our parents. So we hide to do it. It's a shame for a Christian to do that. So how transparent are you? The man and his wife in Genesis 2, they were naked and not ashamed. But when your nakedness is exposed, you'll be ashamed. Because that is not voluntary. But if you choose to be naked, you will never be ashamed of your nakedness. But when your nakedness is exposed, you have to be ashamed. Let me give you an example. You go and visit your parents. You're married. And then you want to give gift to your dad or your mom. You and your spouse go to sit in the car. Then you tell them, honey, please, I'm coming right now. Then you run, you go to your mommy, mommy, mommy. Daddy. Then you run to the car. You haven't said anything to your parents. 
The following year, you have to visit them again, maybe Christmas or New Year or Easter, and, or maybe birthday of your parents. Then you do the same thing. Do you know what you have told your parents? My husband or wife does not want me to give you money. You haven't said anything, but what you have done, you have painted what we call a portrait of your spouse. Your parents now have a mind about your spouse that he or she does not want you to give them money. By your actions, you have betrayed your spouse. Many of us are guilty. Many. You see, I've been asking people, people ask me, should we have joint account or not joint account? And I said, if you're a Christian, you're struggling with this, there's a problem. You have given your genital to this person. Your genital and your money, which is more expensive? We <laughs> Here's a phone. You have a funny phone. How? How can I be married to you and when I pick your call, you are upset? It's because of trust issues. Trust issues. Why should Christians suffer trust issues? If we suffer it, then we have to go to Adanono Asem. Last time, what happened? Some of us single people, the person you are claiming to be dating or courting is already flirting with other people. Dangerous red flag. On our radio program, we've been discussing red, yellow, and green flags. Because there is red, there is yellow, and there is a green. You must look out for them. In marriage also, you find red, yellow, and green. So wherever you turn, you will face it. And he went, okay, can Ruth chapter 2 verse 11. Now, you did about you and one dance here. The testimony about her was this, how you left your father and your mother. She left father and mother. Look at it. Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for who? Your mother-in-law. Young men and young women, anybody you marry belongs to a family. You don't pick people on the street. And so you must be responsible enough to connect with your mother-in-law and father-in-law if they are alive. Your brother and sister-in-law, connect with them. Because legally, an in-law is basically a relative through marriage. So an in-law is not an outsider. They are a stakeholder. Because you have married their relative. It's like if you go and marry Satan's daughter. Satan is your father-in-law by default. He can visit you. You cannot marry his daughter and say you can't come to our house. <laughs> are we together, church? So you need to build a relationship. And look at what it says. How you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth. The land of your birth. You see, I'm married to Evelyn. Yafuwa is her name. I call her Midofuya. Now, Ya is Ashanti. I am Fanti. When we were going to get married, somebody called me and said, hey, we are sure say you'll be to my cake, come on. And I asked him why. He said, I found the phone, you have one cake. When you may want that, what's the one that I know him? And I looked at this fellow and I, I just didn't find words to describe this fellow. <laughs> you know? And then somebody was asking me, do you guys like fufu? Hey, Asante people and they are fufu. <laughs> And we are married. We don't even have mortar and pestle in our house. We haven't had one for 23 years. But my wife finds a way of eating her fufu. I don't like fufu. I don't eat fufu. 
I only started even eating Banku and Kinke during COVID lockdown. That's when I started learning to do it. Because when I was in secondary school, I went for special diet. So when others are eating Kinke, you go for other things. And it was fun. <laughs> you know, brothers and sisters, she's finding ways of eating her fufu. And it doesn't offend me one bit. But we are not marrying as fanties and ashantis. The mistake many of us are making is that we are marrying like fanties and ashantis when we are supposed to marry like Christ and his church. The example of marriage we have, this is why when I hear people on radio say, ah, but Solomon had a lot of women. Solomon's marriage is not your example. I even want to add that Father Abraham had many sons. His marriage is not your example. Because if you take Father Abraham's marriage as your example, very soon you'll be sleeping with your house help and you'll justify it. Very soon. But the example we are supposed to keep for our marriage is the relationship between Christ and his church. That is the only example. All others that we see only inspire us with simple, simple aspects of it. But the one marriage that is without fault, without blame, without weakness, without defect, is the marriage between Christ and his church. See how Christ loves the church. The state in which the church is, Christ never gives up on his love for the church. That is what we are supposed to do. As I saw, dry your woman, your honey, your honor, as I said, the Christ too, then I suffer the tear. You see, that's why I find it very sad that some young people, especially young ladies today, who feel that they have been educated, when they hear the word submission, they are upset. They don't understand. Look at the church, the church submits to Christ. The church submits to Christ. And Christ also honors the church. So the man is supposed to actually also honor his wife by loving her and acting as the head of the wife. You see, unfortunately, a lot of the young men that I see today, when they hear the word head, they still think that it's the person who is in charge. I am in control. Headship is not about control. Headship is servanthood. Servanthood. So you as a man, you are the head of your wife. Yes. But you see, you also have a head. And that head is called Christ. So when Christ, who is your head, actually stays as your head, you will not go and use the full weight of your force on your wife because you are head. And that is the mistake a lot of men are making. I'm the head, so I take the final decision in the house. I'm the head, so I'm in control. I'm the head. Nobody questions my authority. I'm the head, so I don't defer to anybody. I'm the head, head, head. Sit there. Sit there. Very soon, you will see that you are not the head. Something else is the head. Some people think that because they pay bills in the house, they are, that makes them head. What if you lose your job and your wife begins to pay the bills? I've seen a lot of marriages where the wives earn more money than their husbands. Because It's not because you pay bills that makes you the head. No. It's a functional responsibility that has a hierarchy that Christ actually is the head of the home. And that man must submit to Christ. So I said it somewhere that any man, any Christian man who does not submit to the headship of Christ has no business telling his wife he's the head. Because I answer, you become a Dracula over your wife. You'll be a burden over your wife. Why? Because these men, they exercise like the people who don't know Christ. And Jesus told his disciples, look, we I say, Jesus, let this one sit on your right. Let that one sit on the left. He said, you don't know what you're asking for. It's a mother who was asking for it. And he says, look, in the world, 
The leaders there, they lord it over the people. But here, the greatest amongst you is the servant. So that's why men, we are wired to serve. We are wired to serve. When I sat on campus for 15 years with students, I saw how men were serving girls. Jesus. You see married men going to do photocopy. They will bind it nice and come and deliver it. And when they are bringing the documents, it comes with food. This same man, if his wife says, when you are coming, please buy bread. <laughs> he won't buy the bread. But he will buy... <laughs> <laughs> the girl so I want uh, what which one pizza okay they want pizza they want banco and tilapia and this guy who can stand in the queue get the banco and tilapia and deliver it hot your wife says so when you are coming stop at Medina market and buy some okra is it me going to buy okra you let this girl call him and say please I need some okra for okra stew he will buy and even buy more why are we doing this to ourselves? May Jesus help us in Jesus' name. Amen. She has left the land of her birth and have come to a people whom she did not know before. Look, no matter who you marry, you didn't know them before. And you are now going to settle with them in the marriage and to know them. So there's a need for us all to understand that we have to leave, cleave, and become one flesh. It's important for us as young men and young women. Now, let me touch on love, and then I'll stop if you have questions to ask me. There are a lot of young men and women who say they are going to marry because they are in love. Let me warn you. Love is not the only reason you must marry. The reason is that even when you finish with your person and you marry, you meet people you love. And the people you love, you must be able to distinguish between the love you have for your wife and the love you show to those people. The other time I was telling my two daughters that I love you, but I cannot love you like mommy because the love between myself and mommy is different from the love between you and me. But both love are unconditional. It's not because you're good girls that I love you. I love you because I have to love you. I've shown my daughters that way. So when they see me spending quality time with my wife, they understand that that love is different from their own. So they cannot compare what I do for them and with them with my wife because she has no classmate on earth. There are people who are married, but their mother and father are more important to them than their spouse. That is dangerous. Because you see, you and your relatives, you are one bloodline. But your father and mother can never be one flesh with you. The only person on earth who can be one flesh with you is your spouse. So they are not lower than you. Neither are they higher than you. And when you are working with them, work with them together. Now to the issue of love. A lot of the young men and women, they like love. When I was driving here, I got to a place they were making some announcements and the guy said, love is in the atmosphere. I said, yeah. Then we need a thermometer or a barometer to do the assessment to check the pressure of the love in the atmosphere. Some people think love is just a feeling. Somebody was asked, what is love? He says, it's a feeling you feel which you have never felt before. This generation, I call it the oosh ash generation. Everything oosh ash. <laughs> Feelings me a deep. Brothers and sisters, you go and sit with husbands and wives, and some the feelings are gone. What remains now is called commitment. <laughs> so if you are just looking for feelings near deep, you get feelings near deep. Oh. But two weeks after that, you notice that the feelings are waning. Love before marriage is spontaneous. It carries a lot of heat. It has vim. 
she was talking about vim <laughs> vim money you know but love in marriage it doesn't have heat but it has commitment so which kind of love are you taking is it the one that has only feelings my tummy is churning i have goosebumps one girl <laughs> she said to me the guy loves me so i asked her how do you know he said elder you don't believe it when he calls me i have goosebumps all over I will see Gumi, sir. Our friend, I will see Gumi Wingina. This is sister. I will see her. Hey! 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 How can goosebumps be indicative of love? <laughs> then I said to her, when I hear the motorbike, they make that strange, scratchy, squeaky noise. I have goosebumps all over. Does it mean I love the motorbike? <laughs> she said, also know the end to me, Kosa. Then I said, Susuma, goosebumps, and you You know, there are some of us, we want that. But ask the people who are married. Those heat, you won't feel it anymore. Because now it's about commitment. The second thing I'll say about love is this. Love is not blind. Love has got its eyes wide open. Shine your eyes when somebody says they love you. Because love requires a lot more than just lip service. So Proverbs 20 says that a man may promise you an unfailing love, but the faithful man who can find. Sister, look for a man who is faithful, who has a vision and fears Christ. A man who has these three basic things has a future. But a man who has the backpack loaded, but has no fear for God, and yet has a vision, is dangerous for you. It is easy for a man to say, I love you, than for a man to stay faithful to you. I have sat in meetings, mediated in marriages. The men are rich, but the women cannot sleep. They cannot sleep. The man comes from an overseas trip, and you have to check his bag, look for stuff. Why? Because you can't trust him. And yet, he's meeting all your needs. Those of you who watch our series on effective living on City TV, I shared the story of a woman whose husband took her abroad three countries on holiday. She looked at the husband and said, Enye ni enye ni. Somebody will kill to go abroad. But the woman went and she came back and told the husband, that is not the most important thing because she went on this trip all alone. She was looking for the company of the husband, but the guy was busy working. Couldn't take leave to be with his lover. And these same people can take leave to do other things. Do you know that this man actually went to watch the World Cup? This is a man who was able to go and watch the World Cup, but could not spend time with his wife who he had bought holiday ticket for. Look, sister, when somebody says they love you, take your time. For women, the next greatest sound in your ear, aside your name, is I love you. Some girls would actually say, did you say, what did you just say? Can you just say it again? If you mean it, I love you. Can you say it a bit slower? I love you. Say, ah. And some of you have started cooking for the person. If he's looking for a cook, there are a lot of cooks out there. Some of you have started doing laundry to show that you know how to wash. Keep doing the laundry. The worst one is some of you have started doing sleepover. Keep sleeping over. Because you see, marriage will grow the things you have sown. Before marriage is seed time, and when you marry, is fruit. Pray that when the fruits are growing, you won't come to us off of and say, Osofo, me could do that, say, Osofo, I'm a baby. Oh, brother, I win you. Oh, brother, I know I got it gone. Oh, brother, I know I got it gone. I've been in the phone. I do. Phone, I do me, and you know. I do me, I check. Nana, who, who, yeah? 
Ofo me wa ifa fe o chat ni ex o chat ni ex ye gugun po ni ni e be soa You know that the ex has been shadowing you for a very long time but you went ahead and married her Meanwhile, she was not detached from the ex nyankopon ho ye mo bo no moy and I pray to God that the little we've shared with you will go a long way in helping our marriages and relationships. It's a journey. Take your time to walk through. It's an experience. Take your time to enjoy it. It is full of lessons. Take your time and learn those lessons. And above all, love, live, and learn. Love, live, and learn. That is what human beings are called to do. Love, live, learn. Thank you very much. Thank you, Papa. Shall we, shall we just offer another clap for Papa? I think it's so powerful. Right. I know you all enjoyed it. I want us, uh, those who have uh, questions or suggestions or anything for Papa, kindly raise up your hand. We'll bring you the mic. Then you say your question or you ask your question. Please, anyone? We will take two questions at a time. Anyone? Or something, clarification. You need some clarity on some issues. Please, there a hand at the back. Okay, I thought I saw a hand there. So, baby, I do you want to say, be a serbusana, a brain shed and nihosa, and tea, say, Hena, I send to be a suni hodi, and I'm the madame and young cop once, and I'm madame, I say, no more fetcher, no me co, me co, and me co all the way to me, which you can also, and tea. Papa, Papa Amos, yes, committee uh, questions. Pacho, <laughs> maybe Sasse. Yes. Eh, yes, I worry about what, and now I don't know what. Into who can buy it? Iti, you be caught. You took one. Now you drew a few from your hobby. Be near who said, "In Kuya, a day in Kenya." It's a long okay. journey. In the middle of it, you realize that. All right. Okay. A day be now me be seeing a few more caught. Before you so, but maybe five, three, how much I have final a short talk a crack until Timano tears him now. Go, we do run about to be what this side would do on a roundabout to be, yeah. We do on an amuse say may gauge, you know, a cost room temperature. No, let me who name them. So as soon as I saw it, me contain me park here. But don't forget, you're running company, be or coins, so you're from a leader freak. I want to change on my office for her. To my friend, on any wife, Leticia and Mike, and I said, Mike, Leticia, I'm having a challenge with my car around your home. God, they are also living on the other side there. And then they came. When they came, they checked what was happening, and then they said, No, the way I did it, and I said, You're Jack because mechanics be on chair. Into me, you know, my woman, you know, the go on No, me the coffee. Nipa, I make one in China, and I'm a friend. So I called, and the person drove here to pick me in his car, and we went to the place. We were going to do a live Zoom to LIC, University of Ghana. They were having their men's conference. So they have a studio somewhere down there. Oh, recording. You see, I was on a journey to the place. I had a challenge. Now, when I had a challenge, I could have said, I could have also joined Trotter or Taxi. Or I could have done a boat and I could have gone. But I called a friend because I needed the car to be in safe hands. Because I don't know anybody here. 
And they took me to their mechanic, and I left the car with their mechanic, and I went away with peace of mind. Now, when you are faced with a challenge, you don't throw your hand in despair. There is a challenge. You have to pause and ask yourself, what challenge am I confronted with? Now, if we hear any buy, you see, I told you, you see, I will try and you hear your mona, you're the home tier. You see, when you are desperate and you desperately respond to situations, you do things when you sit back, you regret. So, there's a need for you to do an assessment of what the challenge is, where the challenge is coming from, look for your contribution to that challenge and the other party's contribution to the challenge. Now, what is the way forward? If you don't do that, you get desperate and you take desperate decisions and later on they become counterproductive. And that's what we see today. We're not, we're not patient to pry into it, to know and understand. So I want to plead with whoever is faced with a challenge. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to enjoy marriage. I'm going to enjoy I'm going to enjoy Ruta. Eh. Are you sure? I was fortunate to have gone for marriage counseling for nine months. We did three months at our local church, three months at the district church, and then that was the requirement, six months. When we finished, we realized that we still had time, so we went for professional counseling, three months. So nine months of counseling. In all the nine months, I was never told once that in the middle of the night, your daughter would wake up and shout, Daddy, Daddy! <laughs> and the day Jesua did that, when she was small, she was in a baby's cot next to us. Daddy, daddy! So I, I nudged my wife and said, Oh, frail. Oh, see, so frail. <laughs> I was never told that my wife would say, You are the one being called. I assumed that when I say she's calling, my wife will rise and go. She said, No, you go. And you know what she was asking for? Daddy, I will sleep at your back. A child who is in a baby's cot sleeping doesn't like the cot. She wants daddy's back. So I had to put her my back and put a cloth on. I know how to do it. Put it because I saw my father do it for my younger siblings. It was beautiful. Today, fathers don't have time. All they know is how to impregnate a woman. Boo! Ba! They have become Galamse people. Or chainsaw operator. Hoo! 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 <laughs> you know, and my daughter slept at my back. I, I, I felt behind me, when a child is behind you and they sleep, you know she has slept. I'm going to put her in <laughs> And I'm talking about 2 a.m. Can you imagine? And I'm still walking through, pacing in the room. <laughs> and she's behind me. I was never told in counseling. Never, never. But I've had to learn it on the job. That's the beautiful thing with marriage. Marriage is a whole school that when you go in, you should be ready to learn some things on the job. I was never even told that one day you'd be sleeping and your wife would tap you in the middle of the night and say, hey, oh, <laughs> but it happened. It happened in my marriage. I was asleep one night. All I heard was my wife, hey, ato, ato, oh, <laughs> My marriage counselor, they never told me. You, you are sitting there. You think marriage counselling is a road book where they give you A to Z of archaeology. You are joking. Your wife will take you through school. Your husband will take you through school. That school is called the school of endurance. Some of you, the young men and women, you are not ready to endure anything. That's for me. I can't take nonsense. So in marriage, there's plenty nonsense. It's not everything in marriage that makes sense. So, but we are there. Enjoying a big time, Charlie. You have no idea. You see the brother, he's praying here. You are excited. Marry him. He doesn't even open his Bible. Then reality dawns on you. When he opens his mouth, 
worms, worms. <laughs> what is coming is worms. Say, hey, so you, you are Methodist brother. Methodist is the brother I can say there. Oh, boy. So when you are Oh, can I come as well? You see the sister, always nice, dressed too much. You go to marry her, you take her to your house. Brazier is here, panty is here, shoe is here. She's looking for her and say, have you seen my panty? <laughs> do I wear it with you? <laughs> you are responding, do I wear it with you? No, you can't say that to your wife. You have to now bend down and look for it with her. That is life. And many of you, you see, you are waiting for marriage counseling to think you get your foundation for marriage. No, marriage counseling is not what gives you foundation. The foundation is the training you have received from your childhood all through to the time the person says, I want to marry you. That's the foundation. The rest is called building blocks. Everything else is building on that foundation. So make sure your foundation is right. Make sure. I see a hand up there, sister. Please wait. Because of the recording, let them give you the mic. Hello. Yes, please. Please, I want to pray that if you are built on the wrong foundation and you are not married, what do you do? All right. Bring your along. Thank you. Fantastic. You see, for us in the house of the Lord, there's hope for us. You know, the writer of Psalms asked the question, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the writers do? Uh, the writers can do something. Those who are into structural engineering will tell you that foundations can be re-engineered. But it costs a lot to re-engineer a foundation. You know, so first and foremost, we have to identify what foundations are wrong. baby. Reinforcement. We must be committed to re-engineering the foundation so that we can build on it well. The beautiful thing with foundations is that the eyes do not see the foundation. What we see is a superstructure, but the substructure is hidden from the eyes. And the beautiful thing is that the substructure actually holds the superstructure. If there's anybody who has been to Dubai here, when you go to Dubai, there's a building there. It's the world's tallest building. It's called the Burj Khalifa Towers. It's 163 floors. Ghana, our tallest building is 29 floors. So when you walk and throw your weight about, be careful. Elsewhere, they have 163 floors. That building, when they were building it, they dug 50 meters to the ground for foundation. 50 meters. Because of the nature of the height, it determined the foundation. So each one of you, how far you want your marriage to go, lay that foundation. And when you lay it, build it in grand style. And we'll come and watch and celebrate you. Thank you. Okay, there's a hand there as well. So when you're done... All right, okay, so we go back to the basic design. You see, our basic design as human beings is this. Sister, what's the name again? Emma, yes. Emma, God created us male and female. When the female has concerns, has issues, the first thing that comes to them is, I want somebody to talk to. And I'm a boy. Your majority of time, you want to talk about it, so you ventilate. You've got to take it out of your chest. Take it out of your head. Because if you don't talk about it and it sticks and stays with you, all of a sudden, you start having a headache. Your head is warm. You are sweating. Your heart is palpitating. 
Why? Because you are not designed to process things that way. Contrast that with a man. Majority men, when they have an issue, the first thing they think of is not to talk. The first thing is spend time to process. So you see the man very quiet. He's moving. His brain is working. He's thinking about so many things. So if the lady wants to talk, the man wants to think, how do we find a bridge? The bridge is this, that if you make a suggestion to him, that Charlie, let's talk to a third party. Don't force it. Throw it as a proposition. Give him space to think through. Let him bring his response. When he brings his response, don't act irrational. The sad thing is that a lot of women, when you say, oh, but this, this our marriage is final. We don't need help. Go, eh? Hey, I need to man. <laughs> no, that's not a good approach. You've got to do what we call persuasion. You need to persuade him. And most women will look at the man in the man and not the boy type in the man. And inside every man, there is a boy tendency that likes to be pampered, but they don't show it. That's why the slave queens are very powerful. You know why? The slave queens focus on the young boy in the man. So they don't create heat around the men they go after. They create calmness. And they give them what I call Delilah therapy. Eh, there's no man on earth who can resist Delilah therapy. But that therapy, when he's given to a man, you see him blinking his eye like it. <laughs> because he gets him. So please, women who are married, find some cozy ways of winning the heart of your men. Unfortunately, the prescription out there is fire for fire. Bring it on. You see the nose shaking. Look, if you have a man in your life and you create heat, he will just run like this. He will find a place to hide. Men don't like heat. So stop creating heat. The wise women, they don't create heat. They don't set fire. If there is fire at all, they look for fire extinguisher to quench the fire. That's all wise women do. But today, a lot of the unwise women who are on radio and social media, or I have a man, to be man, tell your mind to him. Is that the solution? Go and look at their marriages. It's not working. And yet they are very loud and vociferous on social media. So don't follow those patterns and win the heart of your husbands. We can always win. Amen. Well, you see, differences by their nature can disturb. But if you understand your differences, it should not disturb you. Recently, I was sharing somewhere that my wife and I are completely opposite. We are opposite. But you see, the mistake many people in marriages make is that they are trying to make each other like each other. So the wife is striving to make the man like her. Think like her, behave like her. Now, say me, they say, na me, no. So you should also do the same. No, it cannot be. In this life, people are different. And you must come to a place of appreciating we are different. For instance, I am an ex tempore speaker. My wife is not. She's a scripted speaker. So if she's speaking, every line has to be written because she's a perfectionist. She's afraid of making mistakes. My design, I'm not afraid of mistakes. So I take sometimes terrible risk. You see, we are completely opposite. The kind of radio programs she likes to listen, I don't like them. The kind of TV programs she likes, I don't like them. Now, how do we manage such sharp differences? First, to acknowledge that the differences exist. Now, once you identify that it exists, you do a cost-benefit analysis of the potential impact of same on you. When I was growing up, there was a man who was a professor, 
and he got married to a woman who was considered those days as stark illiterate. She hasn't been to the classroom. I mean, first year, then San Seven. San Seven, yeah. I think they call it San Seven those days. She did San Seven, but she was still not literate because she couldn't read that much, even though she's been to classroom. Now, this man has now educated his wife to an undergrad status. He was a professor. And a lot of people raise issues. How can a professor marry somebody that... Uh, but he was willing to go the extra mile to make sure that she's leveraged to a certain height. So if you're going to make that choice to think clearly and don't marry somebody out of sympathy. Oh, mini muninti. You see, when you're loving, you must love plainly and you must also be wise. Don't just be reckless and say, ah, feelings. Once there's feelings, and you use a certain word, like. Like is not a strong basis to marry someone. Like is admiration. So what is it that you like about her? The way I will see Krama Hobras here, me pena Hobras here. Okay, you're fine. Now, who could worry you in anything or Jan and Aswa and Abuza or Hobras here? So, these are things that we must all work at, and gradually we can work our way up. Thank you. I hope I've answered your question. Yes. Also, for mommy, this is also for mommy's question. <laughs> she made me feel very humble today <laughs> when she reminded me of where she knew me in her tertiary school days. It's an honor. Nice meeting you again. But from the first thing, how you been? Okay. The first one I want to find out today, age differences. <laughs> is, it, is it good for you to consider that thing? Because I'm saying this, me and Angela, I was saying... Oh, yeah, don't go into too much. Okay, age difference. Like Let's leave it there. Soon. I want to find out, what do you want to do with Saudi Arabia? Let's say 35, 40, 38, um, and then people are wondering that you don't say you are not for you. But because of your age, you are not in France. Because pressure from other areas, you should have that because when you. So when it happens like that, should I accept it or I can do something for you? All right, thank you. Let me start with the pressure. Every time I hear people say pressure, bam, so now I'm sorry. The whole life ecosystem is built with pressure. Abra pressure home. When I was not married, people asked me, hey, Emma, the better worry. When I got married, people asked me, hey, now the better baby neighbor. When I got my first child, our first child was a girl. They started asking, the better boy neighbor. <laughs> and we actually were patient because between our two daughters is six years difference. With my parents, we were two years, two years, two years, two years, two years intervals. <laughs> All my siblings and I, two years, two years, two years, two years. So when you arrange us, we are like the staircase. <laughs> but if you have to arrange my daughters, you have to have one here and one there. <laughs> that one, not many people can leap that. So pressure is everywhere. When you have two daughters like I do, I used to have this elderly man. Every time I go to church, you ask me, now, there been a boy and neighbor. Yeah, man, boy. Now we a Ah, this man did this thing for so long. One day, I just gathered courage. When I went to church, he brought it on. I said, "Da, but you're ending up what? Me feru ebu pa ne mo ma we ye de chatu abim san said dan da ben a be my neighbor. Then I said to him, "Da, I don't manufacture boys. Besides, my wife and I, we are happy with our two daughters." In fact, I insist, if you want to talk about my children, not to say I'm a father of two children. I insist you say he's a father of two daughters. You know why I say that? As a fanti, one day I was standing in my mother's kiosk in Tema Committee 4. It used to be called White Kiosk. And then my mother had gone to a social for somebody who had given birth and they were christening. When she came back, one of her friends came to her Buying something, she said, Hey, Antenna, what's the call? A dinner troll. Now, I wouldn't you pan or wouldn't you pan? 
And as an 11 year old boy standing in my mother's shop hearing nipa ana nipan, and I didn't understand what that meant. Because that was the first time I was hearing that kind of phraseology. So I waited when the woman went. I asked mama, auntie, because we called her mom auntie, because she had a lot of nieces and nephews. They all call her auntie, auntie, auntie. As for her father, we all call him papa. It's amazing how that is staying with the fathers. <laughs> but mothers get to be called auntie. Then my mother said, if you deliver a boy, it's nipa. But if you deliver a girl, it's nimpan. And it was a shock to me because I had sisters. Then from that day onwards, I developed this resentment for that kind of, you know, treatment. Because nimpan means less than human. So she's not fully human. And I said, I can't live with it. So as an 11-year-old boy, I resisted that kind of thing. So I was blessed with two daughters, and this man is doing this to me. From that day onwards, when we said this, he never attempted to do it. That is life. So life comes with pressure. You must develop shock absorbers. Shock absorbers. Because look, when you hit a certain age, people expect. Expectations are wild and plenty. But you must carry yourself responsibly. Unfortunately, a lot of the 30 year old plus right now are acting very irresponsibly. Very, very irresponsibly. Some of them have become attachments to people's marriages. Why do you do that? When you do that, you destroy your image. Meanwhile, you can carry yourself well because I know people who are single and taking care of relatives. So they are not that irresponsible, they are responsible. In fact, my new book, which will come out this year, is Unwrapping Being Unmarried. How do we celebrate being unmarried in a culture of marriage? Because if you're single, it's not a case. There's nothing wrong with you for being a single. Rather, you must learn to enjoy your single life so that when you become a spouse, you can enjoy being a spouse. Unfortunately, that's why you see a lot of people, the pressure of singlehood, they couldn't manage it. Now, they use marriage as an escape from single, only to discover that mm -mm, when you marry to crown, it has its own issues. So now, they are married, but they wish they were single. And meanwhile, today you see many singles, single, but they are acting as though they are married. Why should it be so? So, sister, as for pressure, it is there. And if you are here and somebody says, oh, yeah, check, oh, yeah, check, I went to a church, one brother stood up to answer a question. Somebody said he's Methuselah single. Hey, we don't. Yeah, yes, I do. We are not a Hanipa. Where I sit providing counseling support for people, I know people have left churches because of this. Why don't you pray? 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 This question is not a new ministry from the Holy Spirit. To the extent that some people even get married, somebody can actually literally touch your tummy to see whether something is coming. I mean, for me, this is witchcraft. Why do you do this? You are saying, "Yeah, your mom pay." It means right now I've told my pastor, "Let's not be calling all those who are married and they are old." We keep doing that. They be anu abe jine ni mo iradi, iradi, iradi. Me nyan wari iradi mo fu bi ba iradi na wadeba. Every day, this sister will be brought forward. Every day, no one can come she ni bi no abe jine. Eh, now sister, oh, oh, kuno, oh. I know so can prophets in home. Me abe jine jine ni mi ya sa me me tu su eti yao. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's be very careful. It's hurting people. People are broken. And they are sitting there. As if say, I'm worried. Anybody 
And yes, I'm buying our Bible. <laughs> now, the issue of age. I went somewhere to do a seminar, and there was this elderly man. He said, Age is only in the head. And I laughed. He said, Age is a number. I said, Hey, senior, age is a number. Oh, okay. So we went on break. When we resumed, because it was afternoon session, you no, know, we had a seminar, and we had go for that. And they had just gone for big lunch. <laughs> Those days now you don't swim, you know. You don't swim as easy. Mama, you don't swim, 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 you don't so when they came, I decided to put them through exercise. Touch your toes. <laughs> and they were going up and down. The boys and girls were all doing it. I saw the man, Okwaro Aka. Okwaro Aka. I said, okay. After your point, I said, I'm meeting out the exercise. Because you realize that age is not just a number. It has manifestation in your body. So if you are going to marry somebody who is older than you, you must understand that their passion will win faster than you. And people don't think about that. And most of the people may That's the motive. Because they see you are old, when they marry you, they stand the chance of you leaving them <laughs> quick. Now who will be our reality? Who be wage and a growl? Sure. So it's important that people understand that age is not just a number. It has implications on ourselves, our body as we grow. And your organs are not going to be as active and buoyant as you were when you were young. Me, I will be 53 this year. And I know the difference when I was 40 and now that I'm turning 53. I know when I was 30 and when I became 40. So let nobody kid him or herself into thinking that age is just a number. It's not just a number. Today, a lot of the young girls are going for older men. Well, if you make that choice, you must understand that choices come with consequences. And when you make a choice, you cannot choose a different consequence. If I was wearing white and I decide to roll here, Look, I cannot choose which thing will touch my dress or my outfit. No, I can't. Once you roll, the debris and the dirt there, they come and affix themselves on your dress. So choices come with consequences. So choosing to marry somebody with a wide age range has consequences. If it is the same age bracket, it has consequences. If you have somebody who is a woman who is older than you, it has consequences. My question is, are you ready to live with the consequence? If you are ready, then that's fine. But if you are not, please, don't go there. I hope my answer will quest. Okay. Ebi won't be I'm sorry, okay, that you were questioning. Oh, that is the bro. Uh, Daddy. Nine months, but I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in those days, no counseling, no. Who we are counseling and saying I'm out date. Yeah. Oh yes, a lot, a lot of benefits. In fact, my counselor is still alive. Well, I'm saying, Obi, I'm going to counsel you now. Crane data. This is a CIA. We're in local church now. Me and my married committee chairman. Yeah, we're ranting and we're about to be a urban or crane data or person they worry. It is one of the common questions I'm going to be asking. What a baby are you going to be worry? I see you. My sister said, "Ento asa fini be kwe wiye no ni a worry." It is my responsibility to see say a brain or all can. That's the essence of the marriage committee, really. 
But we do baby no na kwa ya akwensi de. So there's a tussle between ni obe warno no ni marriage committee. Na ye chu diary wa nyami fia. Na bun some also de be day. So for me, it is we helping them if they have a date, as long as it fits into what we call the minimum threshold for counseling. Because most churches do like three months, or in some cases six months. Say six months are. We should tell them way ahead of time. The young people should know. So that they work in the church's plan. Like I told you, me those days no, yeah, the NNA is six months. We are local, not three months. Now I call district, three months. And then I'll be sure I'll suffer then a wife for another session in the last three months. But the area and we realized that we we're gonna marry in November. So we decided to do three more months na yewi. Because we, we married as virgins, so there was no rush. Both my wife and I were virgins. And then Matras is 30 years as a virgin. What the rush? Two months, three months, and a very But one more woman of Mampamrika, the baby is she. What be a boy? Ain't he? Oh, no, 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 But that's it. Oh, we go, Monsieur. Uh huh. No, be a slip. Yeah, we go, Monsieur. So I just want to. So say that's the daddy. It's practical. Yeah, it's practical. Uh, it has to be practical. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much. That's the daddy. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Any other question? Daddy, do you play golf? Yeah. Do you play golf? No. Oh, okay. No, not. You look like a golfer. Yeah. And I remember. You know, so, you look like a golfer because yeah, golfers, yeah. when they grow, they are very strong. Yeah, I'm strong. You know, I'm No, you see, I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. Your church has a lot of elderly people. Now, who are a sorry and pinning for Musanoa, you have to draw close to them. Unfortunately, a lot of us feel adequate in ourselves. And we feel that the older people have nothing to actually offer us. Please draw close to them. Do so. I was so blessed that when I was growing up, I was surrounded by elderly people. Elderly people. I remember about six years ago, I was on a doom being interviewed by Smart. And when we were talking, an elderly man just walked into the studio. Obora I say, ah, na papa na na wakasa na me ba na meet you no way. And I'm saying, oh, nyapa pa, young man or two. I say, hey, and I wakasa say peni sa ano. I say, da, minim peni phone na nante. I want to plead with you. Listen, there is so much benefit in having elderly people with you. Don't lose their wisdom. Don't lose their experience. Everything they tell you may not be right, but there is experience behind what they are saying. If you listen, you would avoid the mistakes they made. And this is the benefit of having the older people around us. They also need your energy and your foresight and drive so that the church can move together. Let us work together to ensure that the church of God is built. Let's leave nobody behind. I want to say a big thank you to Session, to the ministers, to the leadership, to the youth, to the committee for this year for the kind invitation. Now, me per se, you told me, Mammy, the favorite hymn. I'm the last by you to you. Captain of Israel's host and God. Oh, for
by thy unerring spirit led, we shall not in the desert stray, nor full direction need. Let's sing it together. love is near, we shall not have fear or danger. I want you to pray to God that your life will not produce fear or danger in the life of anybody. Because love takes away fear. Love casts away the multitude of fear. Lord God, we come to you this evening. We commit ourselves into your hands and we ask for your grace. Lord, be merciful to us this day. As we move away from fear, as we move danger out of our pathways, let us, oh God, receive your love that is able to kill every form of fear and danger. We thank you. In Christ Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Thank you once again, and God richly bless you. I think the applause is swapped. Thank you, Papa, very much for, for the message. Please, at this juncture, I want us all to stand up and the RPV will take us to Opetri. Amazing love, how can it be? Ta-ta!
Papa blesses our offertory and gives us the benediction, there is a short announcement for all of us. If you were blessed today to be here, we want you to also come tomorrow. Nyame Adma Ochna will be under the moonlight. So when you are experienced living there, I expect you to be here tomorrow to be an awesome experience and I want you to come. Uh, there will be a film show then after that there will be a discussion about what we saw in the movie which will also impact on our marriages and our lives. And at this juncture, I would want to invite Papa Osofo to bless our offertory and also give us the benediction. Shall we clap for him? Sir, <laughs> Na Namado, a Mahonum cra, wash your share and walk up far when you are in your dream. Name be the pub, I may assure when in you. Now, Mohonaza, O ye are a bayer of Boafo, a Mohonasina. A rather pied a wassy, the Viza over your name or China so, the Abisha Unsa. Bra is in Dan Yako in a fear for na ya sana ba bio o chinei ewade me ye ho sa a o ye dna o de dan no do nkro kro ye he ni fe san bi arem na mosu bi arem me ye tsatsin kampa ana vi bi ke so chena a ho bi arem ama de bi arem ye he ni fi ewade nshira ho no nkro ewade ntu na yimi nshira ho no ndom ewade ma na yi nshira ho ma ho na Amen. I don't know if you have a phone for us to drink.